Hey, 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 good morning, sports gambling enthusiasts. This is Louie Diamond, and we are live in our Las Vegas handicapping studios with Better Center Live, getting to you lots of betting action for you today. I am joined with Chip Cherimbus and Ross Benjamin, and we have a full slate, and not a big full slate, but we're going to cover the whole section here today. We got a college football game. We got a pro football game. We got four baseball games, and we got our most interesting play of the day. So with further, without further ado, let me welcome our two gentlemen here, Chip Cherimbus and Ross Benjamin. Welcome, gentlemen. Good morning, Thank you, Louie. All right, let's just get right down to it, guys. We got a football game tonight. We got Tom Brady looking real good last week. Had some injuries on the receiver side tonight. Line opened up with uh, Tampa Bay. Minus three, got steamed up to five and a half. Now we are back at three and a half on the game here tonight. And that half point, do you think it's going to mean something here today, Ross? Yeah, I do think so. Um, you know, I was talking to Chip Roth air yesterday, Louie, and and he laughed when I said I was calling Tampa Bay Dallas Jr. Because uh, the bottom yeah. line is the Cowboys, as we all know, are, are always a public favorite, right? I mean, not right. necessarily favorite or underdog, but they love to bet on them. And I think Tampa Bay is a step down from that. Yeah, Brady's coming off a great performance last week. Very encouraging if you're a Tampa Bay fan uh, to know he's getting on the same page with his receivers. He's still got something obviously left in the tank. Um, but I, I really have a strong lean here toward the Bears in this situation. I, I think uh, you can't too, put too much weight into what happened last week against Indianapolis. This is a team that um, in the Indianapolis defense is vastly underrated right now and has flown under the radar. They've, they've shut every team down this year. They played their only loss against Jacksonville. was a self-inflicted one. They held the Jaguars to less than 300 yards. And uh, I'm also looking at this, Louie. I think you're going to see a pass-happy Chicago Bears offense tonight because one thing that Tampa Bay does extremely well going back to last year is stop the run. So if, if they're going to get the running game going, I think they're going to have to set it up with the pass. The Buccaneers have allowed 87 yards or less rushing in each of them. Toward the Bears right now and a very small lean on going over the total. But uh, I, I'm pretty sure the Bears are going to be my, my play in this situation, Louie. All right. A little bit of the Bears from Ross. Let me see what Chip has to say on this game. Chip, you got any nuggets for us? Yeah, Louie, I uh, have a lot more Bears for you. Um, this number, I like the idea that they've made a change at quarterback finally, and that project is over from North Carolina. The, uh, the number's kind of funny. You get... Every last week, I mean, somebody had said to me that uh, Tampa Bay had a, a backdoor cover. And I says, no, when a favorite covers like that, they, they're knocking in the front door. Very surprising they covered that number last week against the Chargers. And I think they can play to a three point game or less here. The Bears are in great need at home, haven't had to travel. And um, their defense still is pretty stout. I think it's uh, ranked uh, sixth in the NFL in, in yards. So. Um, I think the Bears at home, it's a great situation for them. I think the public is going to be enamored with Brady here, as they well should be. Five touchdown passes and a comeback win last week. Uh, but I'm going to take the Bears. Uh, there's no question. I've already posted it, and uh, you've got it for me right here. All right. Chipster on the Bears. Ross on the Bears. I'm not biting on the Bears, guys. Uh, yes, uh, Indianapolis, uh, to, to Ross's point, Number one defense in football. So Chicago having a terrible or having offensive struggles was would not be surprising there. Tampa is not uh, the same defense as uh, Indianapolis. And Brady's coming off that big game. But, you know, this is Tom Brady. He can, he can read his press and still be successful the following week. He does have some injuries on the offensive side of the ball. I think you're going to see a little more today, obviously. It really kind of left with no choice. And uh, I'm going to have to go against you two guys here and feel that uh, there's a teaser play here with Tampa Bay. I think Tampa will will get that win. And uh, and I do think, I mean, I know there's an overreaction on uh, Tom Brady, 
but uh, that was covered. They uh, they bet it down from uh, five and a half down to three and a half. I don't like laying three points at all anywhere in the NFL, no matter the situation. So I will look at uh, teasing them as well here today. All right, so that takes care of our first uh, football game of the day. Now, as we uh, venture into college football today, uh, we have a game with uh, the, the green wave of Tulane. They are at Houston. Game opens up with Houston, a four-and-a-half-point favorite, steamed up to seven. Total 56, steamed up to 59. So they're playing Houston in and over. Now, Houston, they're in a different scenario here today, guys. They've been left at the altar three times and missed five games so far. So they've been, like I said, three times left at the altar waiting for a game, and then COVID stops their play. This team's got to be itching to get on the field. You got any thoughts on this one, Chip? Well, yeah, they have missed a total of five games. You're right about that. And my thoughts are uh, there's nothing like game experience. Tulane's got three games under their belt. Uh, they blew a 24 nothing lead to Navy. And um, midshipmen are very, very weak this year. How they came back and won that game is, is still a dilemma in my mind. But I made a I phone call. Tulane, <laughs> well, you and Mario, I guess, are working together. But um, the, uh, the uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for. Oh, Tulane, <laughs> you know, having the three games under their having three games under their belt um, is uh, certainly a plus, and I, I think that's big here. I think that uh, Houston, there's nothing like game experience is going to be working out the kinks. I was kind of interested in why that line moved. Um, the way it had, way it did. Um, Tulane did win the game last year. I think it was thirty eight thirty one. But um, I, you know, I would like Tulane just off the fact that they've already played, as opposed to Houston's first time out. And I just don't think there's anything that can replace game time. I kind of agree with you on that, but there is steam going the other way. So yeah. I'm thinking we got a hungry opponent, and Dana Holgerson will probably, uh, you know probably have them prepared what are your thoughts here ross yeah i mean dana hogerson going into his second year now right willie so uh, they right. should be much better in the second time around this is you know I, i'm going to stay away just for the fact this is an unprecedented situation you got a team yeah. playing in their fourth game of the year against a team playing in their opener now on paper uh houston's definitely the better team here especially if you look at the fact they got 19 returning starters from a year ago and a coach now in a second go around here. Um, and you could throw out the COVID-19 too, uh, meaning they had shortened practice time in the spring because now they've been practicing for how long, right? They've been practicing Ooh. since early August. So uh, yeah, if you put the proverbial gun to my head, I'd have a small lean on Houston here, but this isn't a game I'm willing to take a chance on. I want to see how Houston looks at least one time. And like I alluded to, Louie, I'm not willing to dabble into something we've never seen in college football, a team playing in game four against a team playing in their season opener. Yeah, that has to that has to involve the move there. Uh, you know, having that many games under their belt versus a team with no games under their belt. Well, no, I'm sorry. The, the move went the opposite way, yeah. which I don't understand. Uh, Holgerson, let's just uh, – I'll just throw the, the karma train on him. Uh, Derek King, this was the game last year where he got hurt. And uh, now Derek King is over there having some nice success in Miami. And uh, maybe uh, I think Holgerson kind of left the kid under the bus. So maybe the karma train uh, comes up and bites him here tonight. I don't know. It's not much that I would want to bet on. But I would lean on the dog just uh, just because they got some games under the belt. I can't see grab it, not grabbing the touchdown. But something can a beer game to watch along with the NFL game. All right, so uh, let's uh, roll it over into Major League Baseball Plus. Kind of getting a little bit exciting, and uh, I'll let's stop. Let's start with the, the game that's going off here shortly. Atlanta and Miami. Just talking about it because we got a short price on Atlanta. Does Atlanta uh, get the sweep and uh, bring out the brooms today and finish the series off? Uh, Chip, what do you think? Um, 
No, I think Miami might be the side here tonight, and I'll, I'll tell you what this afternoon, and I'll tell you why. It's because of the price. Here's Atlanta favored over $2 in the first two games. They win easily. And now Kyle Wright, who has been absolutely horrid this season, uh, particularly even against Miami, um, is on the mound for him, and the line is dramatically lower. I think, uh, to tell you, this is the one shot that the, the Marlins might have of winning a game. I gave out Florida, uh, Miami today, and uh, – if they don't, the series is over and we move on. But uh, tonight's, uh, th this afternoon would be my play on uh, Miami. All right. The Braves are 38 and 13, the last 51 versus the Marlins. Mm -hmm. Do you see that being a factor here today, Ross? Not really. I go back to, um, I'd be more inclined to look at this year's matchups. I believe they're eight and four against the Marlins this year. So that would hold more water right. to me because uh, Miami's a whole different team this year, Louie. You know what I mean? Uh, perfect example is today's starting pitching matchup. Sixto Sanchez, uh, he had a couple rough outings at the end of the regular season, but all together for a youngster, he was extremely good looking at his whole resume. And then he was really good in his first postseason start as well. Uh, Chipper, I agree with you. Kyle Wright is – this is a guy that if uh, the injury doesn't happen to their ace, uh, he's not in the starting rotation during the postseason. Uh, he's had a terrible year. And um, I, I, my lean here would be toward the underdog in this situation. Chipper makes a good point. Look, they were minus 200 favorite the first two games or thereabouts, and now they're just at minus 126. Um, that, to me, sends up red flags. I'm going to have a lean here toward the Miami Marlins, Louie. All right. So, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of betters want to back this, though, and rightfully so. Uh, he's had a great rookie season. But, he, you know, he is only 4-4 four and four his last eight outings. But And he did split out versus Miami. He got, uh, he got kind of rocked in that, uh, uh, that last outing versus, uh, I mean, versus Atlanta. But uh, I, uh, you know, there's probably uh, there's probably value in that uh, that dog with six toe. So uh, I'll have to agree with you guys on that. I don't know if I can really go to town on a game like that. All right, so let's uh, move over to the next game on the schedule, and we got the A's who finally captured a win, and Houston finally got a playoff loss. Now, will the A's be able to keep the momentum going to? You know, maybe knock uh, Houston out of the box. I think we're still undecided on a pitcher here. I got Montas for uh, yeah. Oakland. I don't have a starter for Houston. I had, I'm not sure if either of you guys have one, but uh, if you have any thoughts, I'd love to hear them. Let's start with you again, Ross. Yeah, it's I, I got it undecided as well, Louie. So we're on the same page there. And until they commit to what they're going to do starting pitching-wise, when I see these undecided now, guys, you know, it, the first impulse I have now in this day and age is, when you're undecided, that usually means you're going to try to piece it together with the bullpen, especially playing so many games in a short amount of time. There's no more off days in these these playoff series. So that what I, that's what I would be inclined to see. But you know, for me to make a commitment one way or the other, I have to see who the opposing starting pitcher is, meaning the Astros starting pitcher. So at this particular moment in time, Louie, I really have no strong opinion on this game. All right. Montas is an over six out of his last nine games have gone over. And uh, these uh, no days in between pitcher, 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 bullpen, bullpen, bullpen. Uh, you're starting to see a little bit of overaction, but I know you're not a total guy, uh, Chip, but I'm just thinking that off the top of my head oh. that uh, a lot of this, uh, now we're deep into the bullpens. It might be time to start looking at some overs, but uh, you're a side guy. Do you feel there's a side here today at this Oakland uh, Houston well, game, even without a decided pitcher? Well, you know, the, the name of today's at. pitcher for, for Houston is going to be all staff. I mean, he's going to use his entire staff. Um, we should be aware of that. But <laughs> I, I st it's still hard for me. It's still Are hard for me to – pull back with Tampa Bay, Chipper? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what, how to make a decision without a price on the game, not necessarily not having a starter, but not knowing what the price is. And I've, I've posted uh, sides on the other two games already – um, but this game, I don't know how where we can go from here. Um, I, I'd like to know who's pitching. Yeah, I, yeah. I just saw a dollar uh, fifteen right now with Houston on the with an undecided pitcher. 
And the total went from nine to nine and a half. They must have been watching the show because it just happened. Well, my- and they just must have heard that maybe there is an edge to the over with all these bullpens. So, all right, uh, listen, we will be right back and take a commercial. Got a couple more baseball games, and then maybe we'll touch on a little football before we get to the most interesting play of the day. Brad Stein here live from Las Vegas. Join us daily for Better Center Live with our professional handicappers where you get sports information you can bet on. Stop gambling. Start winning. Better Center Live. All right, sports fans, Louie Diamond back at you here live in our Las Vegas Handicapping Studios with Better Center Live. I'm joined with Chip Cherimbus and Ross Benjamin, and I got a couple of Yankee fans sitting there in my bullpen just chomping at the bit. The Yankees, after the first win, back-to-back losses, now they're up against the wall. Chip, are your Yankees bouncing back today, staying alive? What's going on? Well, I hope not. Um, I played against them last night. That was my mega buck play. And now 15 and three with the last 18 top rated baseball releases and um, unfathomable that it can carry on like that for three weeks. And I have I have Tampa Bay again tonight as a best bet. And um, it's just I, I don't like Montgomery throwing for the Yankees. And um, it really doesn't matter to me what's going on. Um, Cash is the guy who started this throwing pitches for one inning and um two innings and three innings and seven guys pitching over a whole game. He may go that way. Uh, Aaron Boone, of course, tried it and um, shot himself in the foot and didn't know how to make a decision once he had taken his starter out the other day in game two. But I, I'm going to play against the Yankees here. They were, they're not built for the playoffs. It's all or nothing. You hit a home run or you have 18 strikeouts and leave 12 men on base. That's the way it is with them. So I'm going to play Tampa Bay. All right, Chip has the Yankees in golf clubs today. All right, how about Ross? Do you got the same feeling on this one? I'm going to have to respectfully disagree with my buddy there. Um, and, you know, you look at the starter today for for Tampa Bay, it's Thompson. He's a reliever, and that tells me that Tampa Bay is going to try to piece it together. I'm not crazy about Montgomery. I agree with Chip there. But my point being is this. Um, the back end of Tampa Bay's bullpen is their strength. Um, and when they tend to fall behind on games, they reorganize their bullpen a little bit differently and are not as effective, and that's the bottom half of their bullpen. And I got to believe, with that in mind, the bottom half of their bullpen is going to try to piece this together for the first six innings. Again, it's going to be imperative, imperative, that the Yankees jump out in front in this game, especially so going into the seventh inning. Like I alluded to yesterday, we saw it again. Tampa Bay's just lost once all year, Louie, when they have a lead going into the seventh inning. So, again, this is a game I'm probably not going to use, and Chipper's red hot right now with his top plays at 15-3. and three. But, you know, right now, um, if, if I were to make a decision, I would certainly give strong consideration to the Yankees, especially when they're back with their backs up against the wall here facing elimination. Well, uh, if they're to do it, they're going to have to buck the trend that uh, the Rays have won nine of the last 11 meetings of these two teams. And the under, ha- uh, well, let's scratch the under. That's a New York under trend, and we're not in New York. So uh, I have a tough time pulling the trigger on the game, and I think that uh, Tampa's kind of had their way, and they may knock them out today, but I'm not betting the game. I'll pass on this game as well. Then we got the uh, last baseball game on the board here today. The mighty, mighty Dodgers. Can they be stopped? Is there, are the Padres going to be able to stop this sweep? What are you thinking here tonight? LA's right now undecided. Morajon on the mound for the Padres. Even undecided for the Dodgers, minus eighty. The total is nine. Chip, any thoughts on this one tonight? Sure, I'm li- I'm liking uh, the San Diego Padres to the redheaded stepchild, and here come the Dodgers, just going to slap them around. I really didn't see much. Of it. it was a great season for the Padres. I mean, they were absolutely spectacular, and they were electric, and they're young, and they're young, and their pitching uh, happened to uh, end up on the sideline in the most important and critical part of the year. And I just don't see them getting past the Dodgers. I don't. I haven't had anything to do with this series at all because it, it's two to one every night. And if you like, I just don't like laying those kind of numbers. And 
I think LA is in the sweep mode here. All right. All right. So looking for LA to play some golf with the Yankees tomorrow, are we? What are you thinking, Ross? Uh, are the Dodgers, uh, I mean, uh, the Padres going to play some golf with the Yankees? Uh, do you believe the Padres are playing golf tomorrow? What are you thinking? I uh, believe they are, Louie. Um, look, here's the thing. Uh, above and beyond everything else, I'm not going to lay two to one on any team. Again, if you're going to look at this, you might want to look at the run line. Uh, I'm not even willing to do that right now. This is a game you could find better value on the board today than this game right here. Uh, here from an emotional standpoint, think about this. You went against Kershaw yesterday in that Dodger bullpen. You scored five runs and lost the game. That's discouraging because if you would have told me going into yesterday that the Padres were going to put up five on the Dodgers with their bullpen and against Clayton Kershaw, I would have said their chances are pretty good. They might come away with a win. Well, they didn't, and now it's about how much wind is left in their sails. So I think the Dodgers show it up. Uh, they're the best team unequivocally in the, in the National League right now, and I think they'll show it again tonight. They'll know how to close down San Diego and we move on. But I'm not willing to make a play in this game, Louie. I don't blame you, Ch uh, I don't blame you, Ross, but uh, uh, I will do my proverbial find a way to play uh, the team that I definitely think that they're going to win. They're definitely the solid play. Of course, they're the $2 favorite, so you know what I do. I find a way to parlay it. So there's not much baseball to parlay with it, but there's plenty of money lines in football that you can parlay with it. And that will take us to our most interesting play of the day. And I'm going to start with this one, and I'm going to give it to you on the parlay. What you want to do is you want to play the Dodgers, and you want to tie them into Tampa Bay tonight on the money line. Not a huge play, but it definitely seems like an interesting play for me here today. So that'll be my most interesting play of the day. But now i got to see if I can tie it up with something that Ross and Chip has. So, Chip, your most interesting play of the day. What do you got? And let us know how everybody can get a hold of you, too, please. Thank you, Louis. I think, uh, without a doubt, the most intriguing and interesting game to me is the Houston-Tulane game. Because how is Houston going to react after all this practice? Maybe they're going to be precise and, and be precision made out there. And then again, maybe the first game experience of uh, different players and speed of the game um, will affect them. Talent-wise... Of course, we've said before, um, they are superior to the Green Wave. But uh, Tulane's playing their fourth game of the year, and they have shown they can move the ball. So I think it's it's going to be interesting to watch either way, just to see how these teams react against each other. And I still have the Green Wave. The Green Wave for Chipper yeah. today. So they might be nice on, uh, on that teaser, I'm thinking, as well. I mean, you know, getting two touchdowns, possibly. Ross? Most interesting play of the day, and uh, let us know. Let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. Give us a little, uh, give us a little bit of your best sales pitch. How's that? Okay. So thank you, Louie. By the way, um, Saturday, uh, I'm going to give you a game on Saturday in college football is my most interesting play today because I don't work weekends, as you know, Louie. So before I get to that, though, folks, speaking of Saturdays in college football, my last three Saturdays with my pay selections in college football, nine and one, folks. All documented by sportscapping.com. As a matter of fact, not only that, if you're looking ahead to Sunday in the NFL, three to five selections haven't decided yet on Sunday. My NFL has been absolutely on fire, Louie. First week, I went 0-3. Since that time, 15-5 and with my last 20 in the NFL. As a matter of fact, at sportscapping right now, I'm ranked number four in the country. Combined NFL and college football pay selections at 26-14. and 14. On fire right now, folks. Uh, you can get my selections on a daily basis or a weekly or monthly subscription, if you wish, even an annual one uh, for that matter, um, at rbwins.com. That's rbwins.com. I do guarantee my weekly and monthly subscriptions. When I say that, folks, it's not you're going to get your money back. It's gambling. Live with it if we're, we're, we're losing, okay? Uh, but my guarantee to you is this. If you're not making a profit after seven uh, or 30 days, or even after an annual package, I will continue on with you until you're in the black. So that's my guarantee. That's my confidence in myself, knowing over the long haul, you're going to make a profit with me. 
That's rbwins.com. You can also get daily packages. I can't guarantee those for those of you who like to uh, dabble in once in a while. Now let's get to the college football free pick. It comes in the Kansas State and TCU game on uh, Saturday at TCU. You know, me and Chipper talked about this off air yesterday, and uh, he brought up the fact, but wow, TCU is a nine-point favorite. And I came back when I said, you know, Chipper, we got to be careful here because Skylar Thompson, the senior quarterback for Kansas State, got hurt in the first quarter last week in their win um, over Texas Tech, and he didn't return. Well, he's now listed as probable, and I just wonder why this line is so high. It, it's The bottom line is it, in don't get caught up with the fact why I'm saying why is this line so high. To me, it sends up a red flag that the books know something I don't know because – uh, TCU right now, they're coming off an upset win at, at, at Texas. Kansas State coming off a couple uh, big wins in the Big 12. I was really impressed with the fact that Kansas State last week after defeating Oklahoma for the first time at home since 19, or defeating Oklahoma on the road the week before overcoming a 21-point deficit, was able to come up with a strong effort against um, Texas Tech. But um, at the end of the day, I'm going to lay the points here. I just think there's there's a reason why the books are are looking at TCU as being a seven and a half point favorite here as we speak. So I would buy it down to seven, folks. Get off that key number. My most interesting play and free play, free being the key word. Okay, uh, is on Texas or TCU. Excuse me, minus the seven over Kansas State. All right. A nice free play there from Ross. He likes to be clear about it because he does have paying clients that are paying for those premium plays. And it's tough to give them out free all the time out here. People are paying for it. And I hope you guys can appreciate that. We're doing what we can to get you as many winners as we possibly can. But at the same time, our main goal is to make you a smarter gambler. No matter whether you win or lose today, you're going to be a smarter gambler every day, which eventually leads to a winning uh, program. So that being said, tomorrow going to be full of football, so make sure you join us. It's Football Friday. We're going to have teasers. We're going to have parlays. We're going to have free picks. And most importantly, we're going to have the information that you're going to need to know before you jump in and make that bet. And hopefully we'll get you an update on that Bills-Titans game. So that one is still up in the air. And I think that a lot of uh, Titans have some issues right now. They have a couple more players tested positive. So they may have to forfeit this game. We'll find out more details about that tomorrow and the rest of the college football schedule. Uh, truly appreciate Chip and Ross joining me here today and getting you all the information you can. We'll be back with Brad Stein tomorrow with Football Friday. This is Louie Diamond. Thank you for joining us on Better Center Live.